Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be repairing this Huawei P30 Pro. At a first glance, the phone looks to be in good condition. There are no cracks or chips on the frame. Yet, when it's powered on, we can start to see its plethora of problems. The display is faulty and the touch input ceases to function. The phone's colour is inconsistent. The frame is black, but the SIM tray and back of the phone is blue. At a closer inspection, that display is poorly attached and has gaps running around the edges. The back panel has a scratch about 1cm big next to the camera from pry damage. It's clear this phone has been opened, tinkered with and poorly repaired. But just how badly? I guess we won't find out till we open it. But how did I come across this phone? Well, I didn't buy it. Instead, I'd ordered a Galaxy S9 and S7 Edge. Upon unboxing them, I would find another phone in the mix, this P30 Pro. It had been listed for $60, however it was included for free. It and all the other phones claimed the seller was unable to test for faults. A red flag for any seller, especially this one, selling 15 or more phones. While I continued inspecting the phone, I noticed a pink border around the whole display and any objects on screen. I've seen this before with hard OLED displays, so it's likely a lower quality screen. It also seems to be poorly stuck down. I can easily slide my fingernail down one side. However, by just doing that, I've now completely destroyed the OLED panel. So with all of these problems, I think it's time to see if we can fix this phone better than the last person. To do that, I will of course need some quality tools. Thanks to iFixit for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for some tools or parts for your next repair project, check out ifixit.com slash Jeffries or visit the link in the description to view their latest deals. Along with the tools, we'll of course need a new display. This one being a Huawei service pack. Included with the display is a new battery, earpiece and vibration motor. Unlike the previous repairer, I've chosen the correct color for the display so our back panel and SIM tray will match the phone. To begin, I'll place the P30 Pro on a heat plate for a few minutes to soften the adhesive holding the back panel in place. Next, a suction cup can be applied so I can pull up on the back, creating a gap just wide enough to fit the pick. Then it can be worked around the perimeter to cut through the adhesive. It was clear to me at the time that I was dealing with the typical liquid adhesive repair job as of the resistance it put up. Some areas the glue was barely applied, and in others, lots. With the back panel free, it can be lifted away from the phone. As an added bonus, there isn't any cables connected to it. Proceeding, there are 9 screws, or 8 for this phone as one is missing, that hold the wireless charging module in place. These will all need to be unscrewed. Oddly, these screws are not magnetic, so I had to use a pair of tweezers to pull them out. With the coil out of the way, we can get our first proper look at the internals of this phone. Everything is laid out very similar to other Android phones. I'd say most phone brands follow two or three standard layouts. The cameras, like in other phones from the last few years, take up the majority of the space up top. I've also noticed another missing screw, this time at the bottom of the phone. Sounds like the last repairer needed an iFixit magnetic mat, which would have helped keep the screws organized and stop them from getting lost. The first thing I need to do is disconnect the battery before removing the other remaining flex cables. Even if the phone is powered off, you can cause irreversible damage if you leave the power connected, so always be sure to disconnect the battery first. With the motherboard out of the way, I notice some weird green gunk underneath. I'm not quite sure what this is, but it doesn't look like Threadlocker to me. Up at the top, there's another board, which houses the proximity sensor. It looks through from under the display. To do this, it has its own cutout which isn't visible from the other side. It works similar to the underscreen fingerprint readers that are in this and many other smartphones. Moving to the lower section of the phone, we can remove this antenna to reveal the charging port and SIM reader daughter board. It's good to see this phone has many modular components that are soldered on in so many other phones. Even the Google Pixel 6 has its charging port soldered in place. After the SIM tray is removed, both antenna cables can be unplugged and deroutered 
before the speaker and fingerprint cables can be disconnected. Afterwards, the SIM card module and speaker can come out of the phone. The last two things that need to come out are the extension wire for the fingerprint module and the two antenna wires. Now while I don't need to remove it, I am going to take out the battery, as I'm curious if there's any damage to the display's cable that is causing the touchscreen not to work. While I couldn't find any damage, as it's likely to do with the panel itself, it does tell me that this was replaced in the 6th month of 2021. I got this phone only 4 months after, so something tells me this screen has never worked. With that, it's time for our new display assembly. As I stated earlier, this is a Huawei service pack that comes with many of the parts already installed. I opt for this as last time I repaired a Huawei phone, I purchased the display only. The problem was it wasn't really an OLED display, the seller instead sold me a cheap LCD screen that broke upon installation. Can you believe the seller made me send the screen all the way back to China so I could get my money back? The display completely snapped in two when I removed it, I did get my $100 back with the loss of my time, $20 in shipping, and the effort the postal service had to go to to ship a piece of rubbish back to the other side of the world. So this time, I was going to do it right. It's time I start reassembling the P30 Pro into its new frame. Starting at the bottom of the phone, I can install the speaker and SIM card module back into place. After the speaker is connected, the two antenna wires must be installed prior to the fingerprint cable as one of those wires routes underneath. Proceeding, the interconnect cable and charging port can be reattached. Lastly, the antenna and several Phillips head screws will need to be secured back into place. As for that missing screw, well, I'm going to have to find a replacement. It's quite long and has a very flat head to it, so I had to dig through my box of screws to find something that would fit. Luckily, I was able to find a replacement that fit perfectly. Prior to installing the motherboard, I'll clean off the residual thermal paste from the back. Whoever repaired it previously clearly didn't take the time to replace it, but given everything else we've discovered, that doesn't surprise me. Coming back to the top of the phone, I can reinstall the proximity sensor before applying some new thermal paste to the copper heatsink. With that, the motherboard can be repositioned back into place. Proceeding, the front camera can be installed along with the remaining flex cables that attach to the motherboard. After cleaning off the motherboard and camera lenses, I can reconnect the battery and the wireless charging coil that sits on top. From here, the remaining Phillips head screws can be reinstalled. Having put the SIM tray back into place, the phone is ready to be tested. Pressing the power button, it took a few seconds to light up, but once booted came the moment of truth. Does the touch work? Sure enough, the issue has been resolved with a new display. I could proceed by setting up the phone and testing its functions. The last thing left to do was reapply the back panel. I'll be reusing the original back, however I'll need to remove the old adhesive first. There was two layers as the original adhesive was never removed by the previous repairer. They just applied liquid glue right over the top. After it's cleaned up, I'll need to do the same process to the other half of the phone. It was at this point I discovered the other missing screw. After finding a replacement, I fitted it onto the phone. After applying my new adhesive, I could remove its protective film. After giving the internals a final wipe down with a microfiber cloth, I can reattach the back panel onto our new frame, firmly pressing it down into place. Now all that's left to do is remove the plastic protective film from our new display. And we're done. So this is it, the Huawei P30 Pro. 
What was once an example of someone's horrible repair has been resurrected. No longer does it have a faulty display, mismatching parts, missing screws, dry thermal paste, and poor assembly. It now looks and performs like new. If you'd like to get your hands on this phone, check out the Hugh Jeffries online store. For the month of December, you can save 15% store-wide. That includes this phone and many others. Just use the code CHRISTMAS at checkout. This P30 Pro still has Google services built in, which means you can download apps from Google Play and not have to rely on Huawei's own app store. This particular phone is equipped with dual SIM and 256 gigs of storage. By using a Huawei service pack, not only did we get an original display, but we also got a pre-installed screen protector, which just saved me one of those extra steps after having repaired the phone. While I'm not a huge Huawei fan, I have to admit the color schemes on some of their phones look fantastic, and this phone is no exception. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.